Oh, thank you, Roderick. I, I, I think to have the advantage to have uh, such a good barrister who speaks such a good Italian is, is really um, a great opportunity. Um, I now um, think I will pass to the other part of the legal profession. There is a, you know, a newly born form called the Incent Co. <laughs> I remember my stay at Incent when Donald O'Mai was the senior partner. But uh, uh, Ian is an old friend of uh, many of us, and uh, he was attending, I think, all the first editions of Shipping and the Law, but uh, if my memory is right, it's the first time you are acting as a speaker. So for me, it's a, a great honor to introduce you. Is uh, now the, as a partner of INSEE's uh, resident in Monaco, so is also part Italian, let's say, because we had to give this to Napoleon the Third, the the, third, the Savoy King, to, to get the support to unify Italy. So unfortunately, but the advantage is that now we have uh, Ian and also some other friends there who are uh, came also from from Monaco, and uh, I uh, Ian will speak to us about in transit loss clauses. What do they cover? Thank you very much, Francesco. Um, as I said to my new girlfriend, the first time I went out to, with her, I, I'm going to try and keep this quick. But um, it's always very difficult to follow excellent speakers, particularly when they've made all of their money by listening to their own voices in court. But I'll, I'll try my hardest. Um, I don't know what you were all doing on the 24th of December 2010 on Christmas Eve at about half past 11 at night. But um, the chaps on board the Valle di Cordoba was sat outside uh, Lagos in Nigeria. And rather than Father Christmas coming down the chimney, what happened was that 15 lovely West African gentlemen dressed as Father Christmas, brandishing Kleshnikovs, came on board. Um, the facts of the case are quite simple. It was a voyage from uh, the Ivory Coast to Nigeria. We had a BP uh, Voy 3 uh, charter party. Trafigura were the charterers. Trafigora's uh, standard chartering clauses slightly amended. Um, quite an expensive cargo, 33,000 tonnes, worth SIF about 33, 34 million of uh, premium motor spirit. Um, these lovely gents came on board. They decided to bring a shuttle tanker along, and their Christmas present was 5,300 metric tonnes of cargo, with a SIF value of about $5 million. Um, the vessel was released by the pirates. She then went into uh, Lagos and discharged. Of course, we were then instructed by the owners to sort out the mess when Trafigura decided that, in their infinite wisdom, they'd try and get back the cost of the loss through the in-transit loss clause in the charter party. Um, for all of the tanker operators and owners that are sitting around here, I think you'll probably know that the in-transit loss clause was designed to take into account those finickety little boring, horrible claims that we all had to deal with as trainees, you know, for the differences in measurement between air and vac and the differences of, of temperature between discharge and loading and all the problems with product being left in the tanks, being left in the pipes, getting stuck in the lines, in the valves, in the metering skid, the whole lot. What, as far as we was concerned, the, the, the in-transit loss clause was not designed to do was to pay Trafigora five million bucks because some pirates had hopped on board and nicked the cargo. Um, I think there's, a, there's quite a good uh, quote here from the Olympic Brilliance. And um, basically what it says is that these, these clauses are designed to cover claims for shortage on the carriage of large quantities of oil, um, which are frequent occurrences. It's part of the practice in the trade generally to recognize that there's no absolute correct measurement and to make allowances of about half a percent to account for discrepancies, which inevitably take place when measurements are made. But Trafigura's position was that their ITL clause, which they had drafted, it was in their standard terms, was actually there to, um, to cover them for this sort of situation. What they said was that the clause in question um, made the owners strictly liable for a difference between the amount of cargo on board at the time of loading and the measurement of the cargo that goes off board at the time of discharge. 
Now, it's quite interesting because if that was right, what happened here was it was a payment of 400,000 bucks in freight for a cargo worth, say, 33, 34 million. It's pretty good cheap insurance. Um, and because of that, it went all the way up to the Court of Appeal. But the in-transit loss clause in this uh, particular charter, I'll leave you to read it for yourselves there, um, the interesting bit at the end is that um, in-transit loss is defined as the difference between the net vessel volumes after loading at the load <coughs> port and before unloading at the discharge port. So the battle was basically, we had a different amount that came off to, the, to that which went on board, and was it covered? Was this claim covered by the in-transit loss clause? Interestingly, and that, that was a party negotiated clause, and as we all know, the party negotiated clauses generally take precedence over the printed clauses in the charter party form. In the charter party form, in the, uh, the BP um, VOI 3, we also had an exceptions clause. And the exceptions clause basically brought in there um, the, the, the Hague Visby rules. And it closed off by saying at the end that the owners could use the usual exceptions in respect of any claim made hereunder. So what this boiled down to was a battle as to whether or not the in-transit loss clause covered the cargo being stolen by the pirates, and if it did, whether or not that trumped the exceptions clause. If it didn't, could we rely on the exceptions clause to get around it in the usual way? Of course, Traffy said um, yes to the first and no to the second. Um, I'm going to skip through that brief summary of the issues because um, I've just basically covered it, and then we'll go on to the commercial court decision. The commercial court, thank God, said that we were right. Um, very clever man, Mr. Andrew, uh, Mr. Justice Andrew Smith, said that the in-transit loss clause was there to do exactly what everybody in the market thought it was there to do. It didn't extend to losses covered by pirates, and that the clause was not strict and was subject to the exceptions clause, as we might all thought it would have been. And he also said that obviously owners were entitled to the protection of the Hague Visby rules in respect of any claim made under the Charter Party, including claims made on the in-transit loss clause. So we won, which was great. Unfortunately, those little beggars at Trafigura decided, much to our, uh, our, our joy and glee, given that there's not much, uh, not much legal work now for us boys to do, so, um, so they took it to appeal. But it was quite important, obviously, for, uh, you know, for, for the P&I um, issues as well, because if we had a situation here where the charters were right, um, that would have imposed greater liability on the owners than the common carrier. We'd have ended up in a situation where effectively there'd have been no club cover because the charter party was, um, was effectively a regime which was more onerous than the Hague Visby um, rules. So it was very important actually for the market. Anyway, I'm, how much longer have I got to go? About a minute? Um, the Court of Appeal, thank goodness, said that we were right. Um, and I can't take any credit for this, I've got to say. It was, it was one of the cases out of our office, but my colleague Marco Crusafio, who sat in the back, was the man who ran it. So if you've got any questions, don't ask them of me, ask them of him. But we won in the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, um, they weren't unanimous in relation to the in-transit loss clause. Um, there was one dissenting judge, Lord Justice Briggs. Admittedly, he, he, he did say that he wasn't as, uh, as well-versed in, uh, in matters of maritime law as, uh, as Longmore and Ryder. But his view was that the in-transit loss clause covered this particular loss. But he did say that even if it did cover it, he thought that uh, the owners could get off anyway under the general exceptions. Um, so that about sums it up. That's the uh, here and I cover the Court of Appeal. Conclusions? Um, it just reiterates what we all thought. Um, the in-transit loss clause covers those sorts of losses which are normal and incidental to the, uh, to the general carriage and the normal voyage. It's an important decision, of course, because it's the Court of Appeal and it clarifies what the scope of these clauses are in the market. And that is me done, gentlemen, within six minutes.